May I have your attention? Hi, I'm Greg Inda. Today, I sit down with burlesque performer Pochop and talk about her act. It's Pochop. May I have your attention? May I have your attention? Oh, tell me, like, how did you get into burlesque? I got in burlesque through um, two friends, uh, Jeez Louise and then another uh, mutual friend. Jeezy was gonna be out of town and they needed someone to fill her spot. Um, and they asked me to kind of step in. And yeah, I did. I mean, I had, a, I had dance experience, so that definitely helped me, but. What type of dance experience? I have a, a moder modern, and then I grew up doing ballet, jazz, and tap at like a mom and pop dance studio. Okay. Um, and where yeah. are you from? I grew up in Missouri. Misery. Uh, <laughs> my parents would be very upset about that. Uh, in a very small town called Poplar Bluff. I consider myself very lucky that my mom had the like intuitiveness to seek out something for me to like do. I think for her it was like this little girl is getting on my nerves in the evening. She's bouncing around the house. She needs something to like go exert all that energy. And I remember like I do remember my first like dance class and like you know, I don't know, something, again, it's like kind of like the music thing, like something inside me clicked. And I was like, this is like home for me. I come to Chicago to study dance at Columbia. My goal was to like, to be a, a, um, a missionary, to start a dance company that traveled around and like, um, you know, shared the gospel of the Lord. <laughs> okay. There was like a major cultural sh shock that I experienced coming from a small town and then also going to a liberal arts school as a Christian. Yeah. Uh, and then also realizing a bunch of things about my sexuality. Um, so I stopped dancing. I came out and then I just stopped dancing for maybe a year and a half to two years. Um, and of course, when you're not doing the thing that your body needs you to do, yeah. I went to a dark place. And uh, then I got the invitation to do the burlesque show. And that was like a huge kind of like, whoo, like reopening of everything. I, uh, I'm i also a Columbia College dropout. Yes. So yes. <laughs> what was your first act? My first act was like, oh God, it was Halloween. And it was like an Adam and e it was like an Eve kind of act to um, Erica Badu's I Want You uh, with an apple. It was bad. I don't think that I didn't really want to do it again after the first time. <laughs> and what, so what, what, um, like, why did you? I think somebody asked me to, and I was like, all right. I don't even count that Eve Apple okay. act as like a part of anything. <laughs> anything. Uh, my first act was Tyrone. I'm getting tired of your shit. You don't ever buy me the <laughs> On your website, uh, you've got, like on the front page, you've got this quote. I am two. I am Pochop, motherfucker. And I am Jen Freeman. I am blurred brown skin hurled through space. Bare skin that reveals a window. A view of internal wars. My work is political. Lodging lumps in throats. Jen Freeman is the breath behind the mask. That is like as close to an artist statement as I could get at the time of writing it. Um, and I guess I put it on my front page because I, I don't want any doubts about the kind of work that I am creating yeah. um, or any questions. Absolutely my work is political um, and it definitely does make people uncomfortable. Yeah, I think that anytime um, a person of color puts themselves in um, an art situation, especially in burlesque or dance, it's political inherently. Like, I'm not given the freedom to not be political, taking up space. Um, I think I start there always. And then also, <clears throat> you know, I, I create work that's like about, that um, examines um, the Black Panther Party, um, that examines uh, what it means to be like a black queer woman uh, in this country.
what's it like when a show is billed as you know sexy burlesque yeah and then and then you roll up with like some opinions about stuff <laughs> man <sighs> I think when I first started, I used to be like entertained by it a little bit. I used to like, you know, put on a, this like thick shell. And I think that's also where Pochop came from was like this notion that like, I am going to do like this very difficult thing. I'm going to pound my way through it. I'm going to like, I'm going to prove to them why this is important. And I would, I would put myself in like these situations where it was, um, I felt like it was dangerous, you know? Yeah, yeah I think sometimes I, I didn't know what the perception was, how the audience was gonna take it, um, you know, how the producers were gonna take it, how my fellow um, performers were gonna take it. Like, um, and I think now it's changed a little bit where I don't wanna do, <laughs> I don't wanna put myself in those positions anymore. Now I, I curate when I'm performing and who I'm performing for and where. Um, as carefully as I can, yeah. And I feel fortunate enough to th that now, I think when I started saying no, I was really nervous where I was like, man, there's not gonna be any more work. I'm just not gonna be performing. But now there isn't a lack of work and there's not a lack of work for spaces that I know my work would be appreciated. What, what do you view as Jen Freeman? What do you view as Pochap? Yeah, uh, for me, Jen Freeman is like the person I am every day. It's who I am. Uh, who I grew up to be. Um, and Pochop is this alter ego kind of persona, um, this super superhero, um, fearless, confrontational, irreverent, like no fucks given, this is my land, this is my space, and I'm taking it all up. I started realizing that offstage people, people were like engaging with me thinking that I was gonna be Pochop. And I mean, I, I don't even know how to be that person like in a casual setting. Uh, so for me, I wanted to like also allow people the room to acknowledge that like I'm also Jen Freeman in the burlesque world too. I think I use both as a way also to like, to release the like fantasy that sometimes can come with burlesque. I want to be seen as yes, a, a persona, but also as like a human being. Um, and also the, the acknowledgement of this duality that public figures in our society have. Do you find that uh, having that artist statement, having that, that idea of the spaces that you want to perform in has made it um, almost easier for producers to book you? I think so. I think it also helps when you have people like Jeez Louise who like has been my champion from the beginning. Like, when you have like people who are like, no, but really you need this act in your show, like you, your audience needs to see this or whatever the case may be. And then also me, when I started saying no, I would tell people why I was saying no. I wouldn't yeah. just be like, no, I'm not interested. I'd be like, no, I'm not, I'm not interested in this show because of the audience or because of like whatever the case may be. Um, and I think that helps at least the producers know why I'm saying no, so they so that they can adjust. You know, if they have um, the means, they can adjust how they're producing their show. Uh, so yeah, you talk about uh, uh, doing some more performance art dance. I, I have several solo shows. I guess my most recent creation is what I'm most proud of right now. Um, it's a show called Dynamite. It's about 30 minutes long, and it's um, a show that's geared towards like. Uh, channeling my grandfather's energy, channeling kind of the Poplar Bluff uh, culture that I grew up in, mm -hmm. church, um, which is something that is like a thread throughout all of my work. One person has said that the way that you view act construction is like a conspiracy theorist, uh, that, that if you um, like went into your room, there's like storyboards with like pieces of red yarn from one side to the other connecting different thoughts. Uh, is there any truth to that? I don't know about the red yarn, but <laughs> I definitely do um, map out my acts uh, visually. Uh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I, I really kind of uh, fell into or found like brown paper uh, super inspiring for me. So I always had brown paper with a Sharpie, you know, I'll start with a center bubble and just kind of like map out everything yeah. from costume ideas to story ideas, to character ideas, to quotes, 
it's a audience pers perspective. Um, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Let's talk about your act. Um, it's Poke Chop Motherfucker. What, uh, where did that act come from? Uh, that act was, it started because of a live band show and needing to find a song for a live band. Um, and this was, it was, It's Poke Chop Motherfucker was the second act that I really created. Um, so for me, it started with the song and I was looking for a song that was like universal. I was like, what's a song that like pretty much any live band that I ever encountered in burlesque was going to be able to play? Yeah. Um, and somebody suggested Sissy Strut. And immediately I was like, bam, this is it, let's go. <laughs> consider myself funny. I don't do well with humor. Okay. I, I just have a hard time like myself being funny, especially on stage. I have to be like serious. I have to take myself seriously. Um, so as I started developing the act, I realized that people were <laughs> laughing and that like kind of like, it pissed me off a little bit because in my mind I was serious. I was like, this is like a serious black exploitation tribute. I don't understand why people are laughing. Um, but whatever, I got past it. You've performed this act uh, for a while now. Yeah. Um, and you you hate it? You, you what, what are your feelings on it now? You know, this act was like, it was the first act that um, I think made people quote unquote take notice. It was like my first festival act. I traveled with it. And it's funny because I think leading up to the creation of that act, I wasn't really getting booked outside of, um, I was a part of Godzilla at the time. So I wasn't getting booked outside of Godzilla shows. So it took me going to a, like, I think I was in Minneapolis, Kansas City, and New Orleans were the three festivals that I did that year with this act particularly. Um, and I, at the time, I, I'm not gonna lie, I was like completely stoked, humbled. I, I loved it, I thought it was great. Um, and then I came back and I started getting booked to do that act. And literally, that was the only act people would book. Yeah. And I think there's something about being black and like putting on an Afro wig and like putting on this like this image and then going out and performing for predominantly white audiences that it just kind of like, I don't know, it, it started feeling weird. And then I started thinking like, well, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. And also at the, the end of the act, um, became this kind of like defiant thing where like depending on where, where the audience was I would do a reveal or I wouldn't mm -hmm. and I started noticing that people got pissed off when I didn't do the reveal like and that started meaning something to me too like well I thought that the whole point of burlesque was that I have agency over my body and what I'm doing mm -hmm. so you should celebrate I feel like you should celebrate even more when I'm not giving you that reveal because that's like the ultimate, like yeah. me stepping into that agency, right? Have you noticed a, a, a change with the reception based on the audience and based on, you know, if it's white or black? Honestly, the, the, the black audiences that I have done it for, um, particularly in like private events. So I've done it like, you know, for birthday parties or whatever the case may be. <laughs> they're not into it. I feel like in those instances where it was a private gig and like a black space that people were like, what are you doing? Like, girl, we know that's not your hair. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like in some ways they were kind of like, this is like some phony shit. This is phony. It didn't feel authentic. I think that like, in some ways I think that that act didn't lend itself in some moments for me to be vulnerable. It reached a point where I, 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 I didn't really have anything to reveal. Like if I was gonna reveal anything about that act, it was that I'm like frustrated and I'm tired of doing it, <laughs> which I don't think is really what the kind of reveal that people are looking for. <laughs> Maybe it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's uh, do a show, just book all acts that people are tired yes. of. Yes! Yeah. Um, what are the costume pieces? Uh, it's a yellow, I start with a fur coat, um, a huge afro wig, um, a yellow suit 
with like a floral print shirt underneath it. Um, these beautiful gold earrings that are picks that are by um, an African-American like jewelry artist. And then I have three picks um, for the act. And then I have like a gold lame um, bodysuit that I stripped down to and yellow go-go boots. There was a point where I loved that act. I loved doing it. I thought that it was, um, it was like, it was good for people to see, to see that image as well of like this kind of like defiant, again, irreverent black woman taking up space on stage. <laughs> Chop, thank you so much for uh, doing the interview. Um, it was amazing. Your work is so inspiring. Um, people are going to get a lot out of this for sure. Um, if people want to book you, what? Uh, how do they get a hold of you? You can book me um, on my website, www.itspochop.com. <laughs> I feel like an infomercial. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. All right.